Welcome to Discover Indie Film. I'm your host, Jeff Howard, and today's episode is going to be four questions with Ed McCarthy. If that makes no sense to you, let me just explain that Ed McCarthy is a brilliant writer-director who I met on the film festival circuit. His film, They Fall Fast, won awards at the 2018 Sherman Oaks Film Festival. And he came in to do a Discover Indie Film interview because of all the wonderful things Ed has allowed They Fall Fast to become part of the Discover Indie Film TV series on Amazon Prime Video. And of course, everyone who comes in to do a Discover Indie Film interview also does the Discover Indie Film four questions. And those four questions are favorite films, an underrated film, an overrated film, and a lesser known film that people should seek out. Instead of promoting the film festivals and talking more about the Amazon Prime TV series, I'm just going to let you hear Ed's fantastic picks for the four questions right now. Sure. So my favorite, I have three, um, and I classified them in terms of like blockbuster horror and tearjerker for me. Oh, nice. Because those are my, like, I do love blockbusters. I love to cry and I do have a soft spot for horror movies. So in terms of blockbuster, uh, I'm going to be very cliche here. And the dark Knight, I do think is one of the best films ever made. Um, you know, it's a great tentpole movie, but it's also a good heist movie. Um, and even that third act alone could be a movie in and of itself. You yeah, know, third act where you really dive in, he really dives into humanity. And yeah. About the, just the two fairies. Like yeah. one, that, that could be a full movie in and of itself. So, so that, um, for blockbuster, for horror movie, I'm loyal to the original nightmare on Elm street. Uh, cause I do think it introduced us to a horror villain like no other. Uh, and it's really well made. It is. I don't super. think Craven gets. Oh, I guess he does get credit from the horror community, but he does. The quality of filmmaking. It's is super spot good because it it's was. Not it's, it's, it's well made, and it's such a. Sh- that was talk about an indie horror movie that was such a tight budget, um, and it's well done. And it was a time of uh, boogeyman like Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees. Both of whom are don't say anything. Both of whom just walk. Both of whom are just yeah. They're just mute shadow yeah, presences. That, that they both have interesting mythologies, but I think Freddy Krueger is your nightmare. Like you know, yeah. and so it's perfect. You can't escape your dreams. You can't escape, you know, um, you know, falling asleep at night. Um, and he had a great mythology, and he talked, which made it even scarier. So I thought it was is it really well done, uh, well crafted film. And in terms of tearjerker, I am uh, gay in me. Love Steel Magnolias. I love those women. I love strong, powerful women in film. Um, I love family dynamics, and you know the, the the it introduced us to Julia Roberts, and so thanks for that. And I just think it was it just made me cry. You know, really, yeah, you know, buckets. Well, in a sickness, yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's a cancer film, yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so yeah. So those are those are the ones that came to mind immediately. You know, kind of thing. That's a good way to go. And yeah. I, it, it's fun that you got to spread the love instead of uh, yeah, yeah. Instead of going like iconic movies, kind of thing. I just went to. to yeah. You know, what are the types of movies I like? And I do love a good blockbuster. I do love a good horror movie. And I love a good tearjerker. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, in terms of a film that I think is underrated, um, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. Uh, I remember back in the day seeing it with a bunch of gay friends. And we then, uh, for a long time, said, which one of us is Romy? Which one of us is Michelle? And we just loved it and thought it was hysterical. I think many people poo poo it because it's just cheesy, which is, it's very, it's very, you know, it is, it's totally like a surface kind of film. But if you look at it, it's structured very, t- I watched it again, um, I would say uh, three or four years ago. And a lot of it does not hold up well, uh, but it is very it's structured super tightly. And right, a good screenplay. Yeah, it's, it's totally, it's, 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 uh, it sets it up really well. It carries it up really well. And I think, I still use some of the jokes, you know, with some friends, you know, like the invention of post-its when people are like, what do you do? I'm like, Oh, I invented post-its and see if they get the Romeo and Michelle reference there. So, um, I, I think that is an underrated film, uh, a film I think is overrated. I'm going to go with La La Land, go very recent. Um, I have friends who love it. I couldn't wait for it to be over. 
I, I thought the opening number was fun and cute, and I'm like, okay. Um, but I, the music was okay. Um, and but moreover, I just didn't care about the characters getting together. And I don't blame you. Yeah. My first viewing, I especially being a Los Angeles resident, like mm. having empathy for the struggling actress and struggling musician. It's not easy. It's not. And that film didn't make them. There was nothing about those two characters that made me care more about their plight than mm. I would all the other waitresses and baristas. No, absolutely. And in fact, I remember the very specific scene in which I'm like, I fully went from not interested to tuned out. Like which, when she's working uh, at the, um, at the cafe in the lot and he surprises her at work and she's like all flustered. But that scene was like a woman asked, I think she goes, is this, um, uh, soy milk or whatever it was. And she goes, I'll check. And then he shows up and she goes off, talks to a manager, gets all flustered and she goes back and she's like, Oh, I forgot to check. And I'm like, you're bad at your job. Like you're bad at this job. And I'm supposed to root for you to make me good at the job you really want as acting and and you get all flustered because of a boy showed up and i'm like that is so i, I don't know i just felt like she could have why can't she multitask i you understand know? i i totally get yeah. why that would be a turnoff yeah it's like she could be good at this job and and still be interested in that guy and in fact if she's very good at this job and and taking care of the customer the, i might actually root for her more in her real well, career. amusingly uh especially being a waitress on the lot you would think she'd kick serious ass so that she can impress the people who are coming in. Yeah, that's true. But I have a funny La La Land story, which is I felt exactly like you on first viewing. Uh, and then I went on a cruise ship where it was on repeat on uh, the TV in the room. And I saw the, I do, I did like the ending the first time. Mm-hmm. I saw the ending again and loved it again. Mm-hmm. Then I saw it from like halfway through and loved it. And then I saw it from the beginning and I was like, wow, all of a sudden this film that I couldn't wait to be over the first time. You like it now? I really like it. Wow, you were beaten to submission. I was, I was either beaten <laughs> into submission or, I don't know, something happened. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I have not. I saw it that one time in a theater. And I'm not going to insist anyone, yeah. anyone yeah. watch it multiple times. But if I am stuck on a cruise one day, maybe then I'll give it a second chance. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad. Maybe. I'm glad that it won you over. But... Um, it, was, it really surprised me. Yeah, it really yeah. surprised me. It was well, and it also felt like it was beautiful, but it also felt like Instagram, like all these filters were on it to look pretty, but there wasn't much beneath that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. No, I get, I get all the criticism. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and and you're not the only filmmaker who has referred to it as as overrated, particularly yeah. because it it won Best Picture for a minute. But yeah, that was a hot <laughs> minute. I was, I was, I was, I was a little upset for that minute, and then I was happy because I thought Moonlight was a much better film than La La Land. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I just feel like the characters weren't enough for me to, no, to, to root for them. You well, know, I think, I think your, your opinion is well supported. Mm-hmm. Great. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. Well, you know, my approval is completely. Unborn. I know. I, I, I <laughs> thought we were going to have to fight, you know, for a moment, you know, if you like, I loved it from the get go. Um, okay. A lesser known film that people should seek out. I'm going for a documentary here. Nice. Um, and uh, one that I still love to this day is Spellbound, which was early 2000s, I believe. Uh, and it's about uh, eight, I think, or nine uh, kids who are participating in the National Spelling Bee. So we follow each one. They're from all different uh, geogra- uh, geographically. They're spread out um, and also like social, economic, um, you know, race religion, things like that. Um, so it's a really nice mix of kids and backgrounds, but they're all competing for the national spelling bee and it is charming. Um, it is, it is, you fall in love with these kids and, and where they come from, uh, different, different work ethics. And then when they get to the spelling bee, I have never been in more like, it's so suspenseful because you're yeah, so invested. It's like, it's like watching the, the Super Bowl. Yeah. You want, you're rooting for like some of these kids by that point you have, you know, they're, they're like kids, so you don't want to say this, but like some you are rooting for and some you're like, no, I don't want you to win. Um, and, you know, I'm on the, you're on the edge of your seat. So I, I've never been in that much suspense in a documentary. And some movies can't reach this level of suspense, um, you know, of who's going to win. Or is it going to be one of these eight kids? Because 
you know, um, you know, it's a documentary, so they may not be following the winner. So I think if you go into it not researching it, so you don't know who of these eight kids, if any of them, um, takes home the trophy, I think it's super it's, – it's, it's, it's well done. It's well structured, super well structured. That's a great documentary. Yeah. I, I actually did see it. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Cool. I think it even led to uh, ESPN a televising. Yeah, because I think it was after that documentary that spelling bees started appearing on. I would love it if that. Press, yeah, right? I would love it if that's the trajectory there, because yeah, because yeah, just anecdotally, I, I feel like like after Spellbound, like spelling the national spelling bee kind of became a thing that the culture is a little more aware of. That that is um which shows the power of film. That does show the power of film. Um and I'm I'm I I feel bad cuz I've never watched it on ESPN cuz I'm the one to be like nope. <laughs> I'll go to <laughs> I change the channel. And those were Ed McCarthy's answers for the Discover Indie Film Four questions. I have to say those were some fantastic picks. Uh, it has really good taste. And you know what? That doesn't surprise me because They Fall Fast is such a good film. Of course he has good taste. I mean, I guess there's going to be people who make good films that don't have good taste, but I don't I haven't met one yet. And, of course, I just mentioned They Fall Fast. You can watch Ed's superb film right now. If you go to Amazon Prime Video, search for Discover Indie Film, and his film is in Season 2, Episode 3. With a film that is as good as his, I gotta say, a wonderful film whose podcast is coming out next, I think. That's Shark Week. And now it is time for me to do the house cleaning. I did mention in the intro that I met Ed at the Sherman Oaks Film Festival. I program that festival. If you want to learn more about it, it's every November. And you can go to the website at shermanoaksff.com. Or you can go to social media. It's at shermanoaksff. And I also program Film Invasion Los Angeles, which happens every June. And you can learn about that by going to FilmInvasionLA.com or at FilmInvasionLA on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Another big thank you to Ed McCarthy for coming in and being a great sport about answering those questions. And thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. If you're listening, click subscribe and give this uh, podcast a five-star review on iTunes, and I will send you a free gift. That's right. I'll send you a free gift. Probably a film festival t-shirt. But only if you give that review and I see it. All right, bye.